Play along with me as I take these online dog quizzes. We're starting off easy, but then moving to a much harder genetic test. I only got a B minus in the last pet health quizzes we did. So let me know how you get on in the comments down below. Let's start off with an easy one again, and then let's jump into one of the very difficult or tough ones. So veterinary knowledge canine. Okay, so number one, I check my dog's stools in the yard every day and I do not see any worms. Therefore, he does not have intestinal parasites. That is false. So you're only going to see adult worms if your dog has got a really serious problem. What normally happens is eggs are passed out in the feces. They then develop into larvae. Uh, they then get ingested by another dog and that's how dogs spread worms. So you're not going to see adult worms in your dog's stool in the vast majority of cases. If you do, they've got serious problems. False. Okay, so these aren't telling me whether I got them right until the end. Um, which of the following is not a vaccine against a canine disease? FELV, well that's feline leukemia virus, so the feline is a bit of a clue there. Distemper, rabies, parvovirus. FELV is the answer. The others are core vaccines, what we would call core vaccines, certainly if they're in your area. Rabies may not be in your country, in which case there's no need to vaccinate against rabies, but distemper, parvovirus, hugely important diseases. Parvovirus especially is one that we still see uh, where I am, not very regularly, thankfully, because people are vaccinated. Of the following, which is the best way to keep my dog's teeth and gums healthy? Brushing with a vet approved dental paste and soft toothbrush. We've covered that absolutely. Chew toys. Some are better than others. Some can actually damage teeth and cause fractured teeth. If you can't hit your own knee without it hurting, that's a good indicator that it's too hard. Or if you can't dent it with your fingernail, it's too hard and could fracture your dog's, uh, fracture your dog's tooth. So it's not that. Rawhide, no, not particularly good. Can be dangerous as well, rawhides. Tartar controlled diets can help. They can definitely play a role. Uh, some are some are proven to be really good, but brushing is definitely the best way. My dog has an ear infection. What's the best treatment? See your vet immediately. Clean the ears with baby oil or rubbing alcohol. No, don't put anything like that down your dog's ears. Use a prescription for my other dog's ear infection. Not a good idea. It might be the wrong treatment. That's how we get multiple resistant infections, which then become a real challenge to treat. Uh, also, you don't know that it is an infection. It could be that they've got something like a barley grass, a grass awn, a grass seed in their ear, and that needs to be removed before there's ever going to be resolution of that problem. Um, clean the ears with a cotton swab. We've already discussed, never put anything down the ear. So yeah, see your vet. Which breed is known for its dark purple tongue? Irish Wolfhound, Papillon, Chow Chow, Pooley. Well, I've got to be honest, I've got no idea what a poolie is. Um, chow Chow, they have dark tongues. Not really a health question, um, but there we go. My dog only goes out for walks in the yard, so he doesn't need to be on a heartworm preventative. False. So I've never worked in heartworm area or heartworm country, but it's actually spread by mosquitoes. So mosquitoes can come indoors, they can come out in your yard. So heartworm is spread by mosquitoes. It's not by ingesting worms and worm larvae like we discussed before. So false, they are still at risk of heartworm and should be on a preventative if it's in your area. Heartworm is a really nasty disease. My housebroken dog is suddenly urinating in the house. What could this mean? Cystitis, bladder infection, renal failure, diabetes, any of the above. Could be any of the above. It could be a number of things. Um, cystitis, and bladder infections, it can be other bladder problems, so stones within the bladder, um, we could be having a prostatic disease, it could be arthritis and your dog's not able to get out and use their door as normal. So there's lots of different reasons why your dog could be suddenly urinating indoors. Definitely worth getting checked out with your vet. If you can, take a urine sample with you. It's going to make so much difference when it comes to diagnosing the problem. My dog scoots his rear on the floor every day after going to the bathroom. This is just a silly behavioural problem. False. So there's a number of reasons dog can, dogs can scoot. They could have infections in the skin around their bum. They could have worms. They could have anal gland problems. Probably that latter is going to be the most common. Um, you're going to know if they've had recurrent anal gland problems. It's something that some dogs will get on a regular basis. Um, they need to be emptied and that will sort the problem out. What is the best way to treat an older dog's achy joints? Tylenol. Any of these are fine. Aspirin, an approved canine anti-inflammatory drug. 
Well, the best medication to use is going to be an approved canine anti-inflammatory drug. Um, Tylenol, which is um, paracetamol or acetaminophen, is a painkiller that we can use in dogs. We need to be a little bit careful and only do that under direction of a veterinarian because there are some times when that may not be appropriate. Aspirin can cause all kinds of problems. Um, it often will cause the guts to bleed and ulcerate and that can be problematic. There are plenty of other ways we can treat arthritis as well and painkillers are only a small part of that. Uh, we can have dietary supplements, certain diets, exercise management, modifying the house around them. There's a whole load of different ways. I've actually got a free arthritis course and I'll leave a link to that down in the description if you're interested in that. At the time of writing this quiz in 2007 in the USA, when is the usual time to spay or neuter your dog? Okay, so this is a really interesting one. So one year old, 18 months after they're fully grown, five to six months old. So in 2007, so that is, you know, a fair number of years ago, I'd have said five to six months of age, it's actually changed and the recommendation has changed over the last decade probably. Uh, and now we are recommending our larger breed dogs. Typically we're spaying them at a year of age or later, 18 months maybe, for our smaller breed dogs, so that's maybe those that are less than 15, 20 kilograms, so what's that, like 44 pounds, um, still five to six months is absolutely fine. There's a number of different reasons for that, which I've spoken about at length, and again, I'll leave links to that in the description. Okay, so let's see how we got on. Ticks, 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 ticks. 10 out of 10. The average score is eight out of 10. So everyone's doing pretty well with that quiz. Let's try something a little bit harder. Let's go for canine genetic disorders, which is tough. If I'm honest, I'm a little bit nervous about this one because genetic problems are very breed specific. And if you're not seeing those breeds on a regular basis, it might be that you're not aware of some of the diseases that they're more prone to because of their genetics. Okay, so let's jump into this. The average score for this quiz is 14 out of 25. So difficulty tough. Let's see, only purebred dogs have genetic disorders. False. So genetic problems can be passed down in crossbreeds as well, but they're going to be more common in purebred dogs. That would be my simple take on that. This disorder, found most often in the Bedlington Terrier, is also known as Wilson's disease. Methemoglobinemia, goiter, iron deficiency, copper toxicosis. Okay, so I've, to be honest, I've never heard of Wilson's disease, but I do know that Bedlington Terriers, they suffer something called copper, copper storage disease. Oh, I can't get that out for a minute there. Um, and that's where the liver um, kind of accumulates copper and it ultimately causes liver failure. So I'm going to say copper toxicosis. Found in many breeds, especially larger ones, this is the most common inherited skeletal problem in dogs hip dysplasia, craniomandibular osteopathy, that's a problem with the jaw, leg perth disease, that's a problem with the hip joint where it necroses and dies and gets eaten away, wobbler's syndrome, which is a problem with the, the vertebrae, the bones in the neck um, of larger breed dogs. But hip dysplasia um, is the most common, yeah, absolutely. So we can actually test for hip dysplasia with x-rays in dogs that are meant for breeding and absolutely that should be done, especially in those that are really prone, like the Labrador. Um, found primarily in small breeds, but also in a few large breeds, such as the flat coat retriever. This skeletal abnormality is also known as slipping kneecaps. Panosteitis, no, that's inflammation of the long bones. Elbow dysplasia, that's where the elbows don't form properly. Patella luxation, so patellas are the kneecaps. Luxation means that they move from their normal place. So slipping kneecaps, I've never heard it called slipping kneecaps, but patella luxation it is. Osteomyelitis, which is um, inflammation infection of the bone. This genetic abnormality is most common in white dogs. Blindness, polydactyl, so that's more too many, too many digits. Um, dwarfism or deafness, so deafness it is. More common in white cats, I think, than white dogs, as far as I'm aware, but um, we'll go for deafness. Which of the following breeds does not have a high, incident, a high incidence of genetically associated cancers? Boxer, flat coat retriever, beagle, Bernese, mountain dogs. 
so it's not boxers, um, mast cell tumors, flat coat retrievers are prone to developing more cancers, Bernie's mountain dogs, bone cancers, um, beagles it is. So beagles are actually the breed that's used in a lot of um, laboratory testing, um, rightly or wrongly. Um, in a lot of cases, that's not a fantastic way to do things, but they are not prone to genetically associated cancers, certainly to my knowledge. This breed is subjected to a genetic disorder, genetic eye disorder that includes inadequate development of the blood vessels that nourish the retina. That's the back of the eye, clefts in the optic disc. Um, that's where the nerve kind of attaches to the retina and retinal detachment. The effects on the dogs range from no symptoms to blindness. Collies, poodles, retrievers, and German shepherds, it's collies. Yeah, collies are known for their eye problems. Um, collie eye anomaly, they have a condition kind of completely named after them. Perhaps the most common genetic eye defect in dogs has the acronym PRA. What does this stand for? Progressive retinal atrophy is the answer. Peripheral retinae ablation. Ablation means you destroy something in the periphery. It's not that. Progressive retinal atrophy, well, that's what I said. Pupillary reflex anomaly. The pupillary reflex is um, kind of when light shone in the eye, the pupil closes. It's not that. Photoreceptor anomaly. This is the most common inherited endocrine system disorder in large breed dogs. Pituitary dwarfism, hypothyroidism, diabetes insipidus, hyperthyroidism. So dwarfism, no. Hypothyroidism is going to be the most common by a long way. Diabetes is a very common endocrine, which means hormone disorder, but is more common in dogs that are overweight, not necessarily large breed. And hyperthyroidism is something that cats suffer from much more commonly. It's not really a dog problem. So I'm just going to jump in here quickly because I'm just editing this video and I see that says diabetes insipidus. So it's actually diabetes mellitus, which is what we think of as diabetes with overweight dogs and control of blood sugar. Diabetes insipidus is where dogs will drink uncontrollably and urinate uncontrollably. Um, yeah, so that really is not very common at all. This inherited bleeding disorder named for the physician who discovered it is found in many breeds of dogs. Von Willebrand's disease is the answer here. That's a problem with the with platelet function, so it causes problems with excessive bleeding. Really important in Dobermans especially, um, and really important to test for in that breed of dog before undergoing surgery, especially if there's concerns that it's in their genetic line. This heart defect, most commonly seen in Newfoundlands and Golden Retrievers, can cause sudden death in an otherwise healthy dog. Tricuspid dysplasia, mitral valve insufficiency, aortic stenosis, sick sinus syndrome. So Newfoundlands and Golden Retrievers, I have to say I'm not 100% sure on this, I think we are dealing with aortic stenosis. I have never, I don't think I've ever seen a Newfoundland in practice. Golden Retrievers, absolutely we have. Um, I can't say that the majority of them have any problems with their hearts, um, but yeah, from memory, I think it's aortic stenosis. This disorder most commonly seen in Dobermans and Great Danes causes weakness and incoordination of the legs, starting with the rear legs and gradually progressing to total paralysis. Uh, so we kind of discussed that with um, kind of earlier. The answer is wobbler's syndrome. So that is where there is a problem within the vertebrae of the neck. It pinches the nerve causes progressive nerve problems, um, loss of function, weakness, incoordination. It's something that needs surgery to correct to stabilise those joints. We're all familiar with seeing tiny dogs, often white toy poodles or Maltese, that tremble continuously. Is this caused by a genetic disorder? Yes, um, shaky dog syndrome. So it's yeah caused by a genetic problem. We can control it with diazepam, um, that's Valium. Um, yeah, so it's genetic. The most common inherited liver disorder in dogs is an abnormality of blood flow in the liver that leads to slow growth, neurological signs, vomiting, diarrhea, and kidney stones. What is this disorder? A portosystemic shunt is the answer. So that's where the blood basically bypasses the liver so it doesn't get processed by the liver and that causes all kinds of problems. Gastric volvulus is dilation of the stomach, hepatic lipidosis, a real problem in cats that lose weight suddenly, they become, the liver becomes full of fat, and chronic hepatitis, which is an inflammatory problem within the liver. 
This disfiguring skin disorder affects Shetland sheepdogs and collies. The skin, especially the face, tail tip, elbows, hips and toes can be crusted, blistered, ulcerated, often resulting in permanent scarring. The underlying muscles can also be affected, causing atrophy. Acanthosis nigrans, dermatomyositis, sebaceous adenitis and vitiligo. So the answer is dermatomyositis. So with a lot of naming conventions, we can tell what the, um, what, what's affected. So dermato relates to skin and myo is muscle and itis means inflammation. So that's the answer just by looking at the name and working that out. What breed is subject to the most genetic disorders? German Shepherds, Beagles, Retrievers, Collies, German Shepherds, their genetics really are unfortunately not very good and they do get so many different genetic related problems. Okay, now let's move on to how to prevent these disorders from occurring. First of all, is this a true statement? If you wish to acquire a dog that is free of genetic disorders, then you're probably better off getting a purebred from someone who is just breeding one litter from their purebred, but unregistered non-show dogs than a breeder with show dogs because the show dogs are likely to be inbred and have more problems. No, that's not going to be true. It may be, depending on, depending on the breeder, that they are more inbred, but that's going to be breeder related. But actually a lot of breeders, they're going to be testing their dogs for genetic problems and purposefully trying to avoid breeding dogs that do have problems. So actually, no, you're going to be much better off going to a breeder who's doing things well. There's a number of different ways that you can tell, um, and I've discussed that in other videos. I'll link in the description. Many pet stores sell puppies with guarantees against genetic disorders. These guarantees are helpful in ensuring a healthy pup. False, never buy a puppy from a pet shop. Um, puppy, fa puppy farms, puppy mills rely on selling their dogs and their puppies through pet shops. Don't do it. The, the guarantees are typically absolutely meaningless. Don't support that, that trade. Um, it's horrendous. One of the best ways to prevent genetic disorders is to screen the parent dog to make sure they are free from heritable problems. In the United States, one registry that records dogs free from specific diseases is the Orthopaedic Foundation for Animals, OFA, for which disorders does, for which disorders does OFA maintain databases of disease-free dogs? Um, I'm going, I've got no idea. I don't work in the USA. I never have done. I'm going to guess hip dysplasia um, because it is the orthopedic, which means bone foundation for animals. So hypothyroidism, cardiac disorders, probably not, but I don't know. At what age will OFA certify a dog as being free from hip dysplasia? Um, no idea because again, but what we would normally say is we don't normally recommend x-raying dogs until they are fully skeletally mature. So I would have said 18 months, but two years is probably going to be the answer. It may be that you can get away with it in one year of, at one year of age, but I'd prefer it to be a little bit older. What US organization track dogs that are free of heritable eye defects? No idea. Um, um, it's not the AVMA. I think that's a veterinary um, registration organization. Um, but should we just do C, certification of eye related freedom? I've got no idea. What heritable defects can be detected by BAER testing? So that is deafness. So that is a way of checking for stimulation of the auditory nerve when you're playing sounds. Um, it's something that's really um, not done in very many places at all. And um, yeah, I'm not aware of anywhere outside of universities that probably offer that test. What defects are detected by the use of a halter monitor? So that is heart rhythm irregularities. So that is an ECG um, machine that is attached to your dog and records continuously. Often that will be done for a 24 hour period because heart rhythm irregularities can be very intermittent. And the chances are when your vet is listening to your dog's heart for 30 seconds, a minute, a couple of minutes, they're not going to pick that up. So a halter monitor is really important. When you're buying a dog just to be a pet, health testing is not important. False. We want our dogs and our cats to be as healthy as they possibly can be. Um, we certainly want to be avoiding genetic problems if at all possible. If you're planning on acquiring a purebred dog, which of the following should you do? 
all of these, ask to see genetic test results of parents and pups, do research on what genetic conditions the breeds may have, verify test results online. Yeah, if at all possible, do all of these. It might not be possible where you are. Um, if you know that there are particular tests that can be done to check that breed that you're looking at, really a big red flag should be raised if the, the breeder doesn't have an idea what you're talking about or says that those tests are really not worthwhile. Okay, submit my answers. I really don't think I'm gonna be getting 100% on this one. Okay, so the answers were all at the bottom, all ticks so far. Oh, so there's a cross here. So the, be the Orthopaedic Foundation of Animals, it's not just hip dysplasia. So it started to record hip dysplasia, but it's expanded to record dogs free from other diseases as well. Okay, there we go. But that is the only one I got wrong. And I have to say, I'm pretty pleased with the result. Did you play along? How did you do in all these quizzes? Let me know down below. I put together this playlist for you on screen now about reacting to veterinarians of Reddit threads. Check it out. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, I'm Dr. Alex. This is Our Pets Health, because they're family.